It's Pete here. So I just came back from the US and I want to immediately do this video for all of you here because this weekend is the new launch reserve residences opening week. Okay. And if you want to find out whether reserve is worth investing, what are the pros and what are the cons, stay tuned for this very honest review about reserve residences. Okay. So let's dive straight into it. Now, for those of you who don't know, this is the widely anticipated reserve residences because it is uh, one of the very few integrated projects uh, in Singapore. And this would by far be one of the closest to the center one, all right? Uh, maybe only losing out to uh, the one at uh, Little India. Okay, otherwise, uh, otherwise, this is really very central. Later, I'll share with you exactly where it is. Now, let's go into the reserve residences uh, analysis, right? So this is at Jalan Anak Bukit, okay? Now, before I go into the layout, I just want to do a very, very quick shout out to help all those partners that I work with, uh, right? So I partner uh, property agents. For, so for those of you who want to get an appointment to go and try for a ballot, right? The show flat viewing will start this weekend, 13th of May, right? And it, I team up with a team of very, very strong agents. They are all very familiar with this project. In fact, I share with them my slides and I share with them how to look at the unit selection. Okay, so if you want someone to help you, the my choice agents to help you, right? This is the link over here, rebrandly slash pit property. Okay, so it's also uh, down below uh, in, the, in the link over here. Put in the application, all right? And my agents will contact you very shortly to make sure that you get a viewing slot this weekend. Plus you can also uh, put in a ballot, right? For this project. Okay, so first and foremost, what is reserve? Why is it so uh, widely anticipated and a lot of people looking at it, right? Because it's not just a simple integrated project, okay? So first and foremost, below here, you get your three levels of shopping, okay? Um, it's not a huge shopping mall per se, but pretty decent, good size. And on top of that, it's not just a retail mall. They also have a service residence over 100 units of service apartments. And then there is a condominium, all right, uh, component to it. And the condominium is quite special because there is a high level here where they call the reserve selection. And then there's a low level where they call it the tree top selection, right? And the mall is going to be um, run by uh, Far East, right? And it's going to have all the bells and whistles you want of commercial, right? Three full floors of shopping. Now let's look at location Why? Where is reserve? Okay, so this is the plot of land, Jalan Anak Bukit plot of land, and uh, it will be here. Now, what is surrounding this? I just want to highlight a few key things uh, on top of it being integrated, right? Is that in terms of food, right? In terms of schooling, this place is fantastic. Number one, you have your Bukit Lima food center. You also have the food street that is opposite Beauty World. Now, for those of you who are looking at schools for children, this is one of the hottest locations. Why? Because it is 1KM to Methodist Girls' School and also 1KM to the very popular and famous Peihua Presbyterian. Okay? So if you are looking for your kids or in the future, you want to sell to the next buyer, I think these are the main components that you want to look out for. Okay? Now, what are the other things on top of the food and the schools? Now, the thing is integrated is just... No, not that uncommon, but this is not a simple integrated project. It is actually dual integrated. Below, it's not just going to be the MRT access. You are also going to have a integrated bus interchange. Now, the only one that's so central that I can think of is actually Topayo. But Topayo is actually not an integrated project. It's just that the bus interchange and the MRT are kind of merged together. So you're going to get really once in a long, long while where on top of the bus interchange and the MRT, you get a residential condominium, okay? Now, how many projects? This is a very healthy size, over 732 uh, units, and then the service apartment, which you can't buy, but it is going to help you in terms of getting uh, a lot of expat population, right? Rental demand is about 160 of them. This project will TOP by about 2028, so that gives you ample time to really wait out for interest rate, okay? So I won't delve in too much, but for those of you who want to know why new launch is so good for the current high interest rate, right? You can watch my other videos on interest rate. Just search for interest rate, okay? Now, like I said, on top of MGS there's, uh, and Peihua, there's also Pukit Dima Primary. So if you have your kid in this place, there's a good chance that you get into one of the three, <laughs> right? So that is not just a plus point for you guys who are parents to buy this place, but also think about 
you know, how attractive it will be to the next buyer coming forward. Now, <clears throat> there's also one more thing about this integrated community center that I think many of the analysis that I saw on YouTube kind of miss. I, I don't know why, maybe because, you know, it's a government project. They don't think that it's going to really help. But I do believe that with the government emphasis in the area, it's really going to make a difference, right? So over here, this is actually reserve residence integrated together with the bus interchange and the MRT. And on top of that, they're going to build this brand new future community building. So what's going to be inside? Right? They're going to have an indoor sports hall, they're going to have library, they're going to have elderly center, and they're going to integrate the existing Bukit Timah market plus the hawker center together. So to me, it's, there's a lot of emphasis and I do believe this might be the start right, of a rejuvenation of this area because the beauty world has been a very quiet area for a long time. In fact, the, the malls that are nearby, right? Okay, so, so these couple of malls, are, right, beauty world, right? has been around here for over 40 years. So this will be really a very refreshing change for the segment. And I think reserve residences stands to really not just help the area, but also being the leader, right, in terms of the pricing. Now, let's look at uh, transportation. Now, Beauty World is over here, right? And just to give you all some perspective, for example, it is only four stops to Botanic Gardens, which will link you, all right, Botanic Gardens over here will link you to Circle Line immediately. Okay, and it's seven stops to Orchard, right? And not just the existing line. Beauty World in the future is also going to be close to the Cross Island line. Now, where is the Cross Island <coughs> going to be? It's actually going to be here at King Albert Park. Okay, and if you notice, let's go back here a bit. Huh? If you notice, Beauty World, okay, it's being blocked here. Let me just erase this. Huh? Okay, Beauty World is actually one stop away from King Albert Park over here. So with just one stop, okay, you'll be able to access King Albert Park right here. And you're going to be just four stops away to Ang Mo Kio MRT. Two stops, right, will bring you to Bright Hill MRT, which links you to Thompson East Coast Line. So really that allows Beauty World, right, to not just be a single line station anymore, right? With a, with a lot of connecting lines, it's going to bring it together. And on top of that, for those of you who want to connect to the East-West Line, you're just two stops away. So effectively, right, once the cross island line is going to be built, right, in the 2030s, right, you're, you are effectively connecting the beauty world area to the remaining lines in Singapore, okay, including circle line. All right, and for those of you who are looking at travel, now beauty world is quite an expat heavy area as of now. And I think with the establishing uh, of cross island line, it's going to help because now you're going to have a direct line straight away to Changi Airport. Okay, now let's look at what are the units that's available for reserve residences. Okay, so over here, a very messy slide, <laughs> but let me just uh, break it down for you guys. Uh. So one beta, you have about 100 units. So that accounts for about 13.7%. Two beta is massive. There is a total of 304 two betas and two plus study, right? Accounting for close to 41% uh, of all the units available out of the 732, right? Three beta, all right, not too shabby, is about 30%. Right, over 216 units and four beta is 97 units, 13%, and then five beta, of course, is the rare one. It's gonna be 1.8%. Now, how do we make sense of this? Very, very simple. This is a project by Far East, and from this you can tell that Far East is actually betting on this area being investor heavy, right? Because the majority over uh 50%, uh, okay, is gonna be the one beta, <coughs> one beta and the two beta in this case. But honestly, I feel that this also helps for those who wants to buy the three beta in particular. Okay, listen carefully. Why, why is that the case? Even though Far East seems to be focusing on investor, right? It's because if you only have 216 units and later on, I'll go through some of the, the layout, okay? Right, in the future, right? Um, but basically not all the 216 units of three betas are good units. That means, any family who wish to buy reserve and have a large enough place in this area to be part of the integrated project, right? Actually, the supply of livable condominiums, there's three bidders, that is still affordable price tag, not your four bidder and five bidder, is actually very, very short in supply. Okay? So for those of you who are looking to buy to own stay, right? I also think that this is quite a good uh, proposition because that means when you're trying to sell your three bidder, there's not going to be too much competition. 
right? Later you will see how many three traders that are actually good. Later I'll show you, okay? So let's look at the site plan uh, of all these units, where exactly it is. Now, this is the orientation. Uh, so basically, uh, north is in this direction, okay? So over here, this side, you'll be facing the beauty world, okay? And this side, you'll be facing the Pukitima hill. Now, unfortunately, you can see that there's no units uh, <laughs> facing the Pukitima hill reserve. So therefore, view-wise, are uh, not that fantastic. This side, the view, you'll be seeing beauty world center, which is just average, okay? Now, this side, we have the PIE flyover. All right, so I do expect this side right to be very challenging. All right, people wouldn't really want to buy these blocks, huh? okay? Uh, because it's gonna be quite noisy. And I think that's also the one of the reason why this area, uh, this block, they choose to build it really low, right? In fact, some of them might be even lower than the flyover. This is to effectively reduce noise for this block, okay? So this is the high block and this is the low block. Now, where is your Peihua Presbyterian, uh, your Methodist Girls and your Bukit Dima Food Center? right over here, this side of the road, okay? So generally, I would say, uh, in terms of facing, uh, okay, so this is a close-up view, right? So where is north? Let me just orientate you, uh, north is this direction, okay? And your west sun will come in from here, okay? So I'm gonna go into unit analysis already, right? I wanna give you guys as much value as possible because so many of my students this weekend, uh, uh, you're gonna go for selection, right? And I wanna make sure that all of you understand how to select the unit and choose the best for yourself, okay? And I don't have time to go through each and every unit, which one is good, which one is bad, but I'll just give you the highlight uh, of all the good stacks that I think is worth considering, right? Regardless, you are looking at one beta, two beta, three beta, or even four beta, okay? So for now, take a moment, <laughs> take a screenshot, pause the video, right? And you will know which are my prime uh, stacks over here, okay? Now, if you want to find out exactly why I chose this stack, right? The easiest way uh, is once again, go down to the link over here. All right, you can see our rebrand.ly uh, rebrand slash peak property. Then my agents will be able to explain to you why we choose these stacks, okay? Why we think they are good. And effectively, right, the reason is mainly because direction-wise and also layout. This project has many, many layouts. So please make sure you go in choosing the correct layout because I saw some of the layout is actually quite bad. And I think that might hinder the future uh, selling price of certain units, which is why for the three beta out of the 216 units, I don't think all of them are great. There's only a small portion that's good. So if you manage to snack one of them, uh, you're going to have a very uh, limited <laughs> limited edition, very scarce product, right? Integrated in the West side over here. Okay. Now let's look at pricing wise. Now this project, when it was first launched, it was actually bidded by Far East and Sino Group. Okay. It was one of the largest high price bid. One over billion, okay? So, the thing is this. Why is it so expensive? Because it's not just residential, right? There's service apartment, there's commercial. So, naturally, what the developer need to do is that because they cannot sell away the commercial and the service apartment side, it's meant for rental, they will need to earn it back, right? And offload some of the costs to the residential side. However, I think that also gives Far East some flexibility in adjusting the price. Because the good news is that when they first bought this plot of land, right? Um, the dollar per square foot, if you count the commercial and the service apartment, is less than a thousand per square foot. Okay, less than a thousand per square foot. Now, if I take away the component of the residential, uh, sorry, the commercial and the service apartment, then the true land cost is actually closer to 1,515 per square foot. Now, what does this mean? That means actually the developer has some leeway, right? Whether, okay, whether they want to go for profitability or they want to go for sales result, right? Because they, you can see that the nearest new launch before this was actually blossomed by the park at Buona Vista and they did really well, okay? They sold over 75% of the units on day one, okay? Or weekend, first weekend, sorry. <clears throat> and the average price is about 2,000 to 2,000, uh, 2,200 to 2,500. Uh, per square foot on average. So what will Far East do, right? Because they have to balance, right? If they want to go for profitability, they will jack up the PSF. If they want to go for sales result, they'll bring it down. So I do think that Far East this time round will want to push for the sales result. They want to give it a big bang, right? So as a result, I think they may be able to bring down the cost a little bit, right? And keep the residential pricing competitive. 
Because while they cannot sell the commercial side, they wouldn't sell the service apartment side, but they can rent it out, right? They are able to rent it out and this are money that they can earn back eventually. But if they have a poor sale, then that's it. The subsequent new launch they have may be severely affected. So I believe Far East this time around, while Far East may have a reputation for slightly higher pricing, but I think this time around they might price it competitively. Now, how competitively? Let's look at it over here. So just now we talk about the true price is about uh, land price about 1515, right? So if you look at break even, it's about 2170. Now let's first look at the past GLS. Right? Previously, there was a few other projects like Dane Tree at Totak, right? Which was less than a thousand per square foot in terms of land. View at Kismis at Ki uh, Kismis View, right? 855 per square foot. And then of course, this is reserve 1515. And then we have Pukit Timah Link, this one that just came out recently last year. And it went for 1343. Now, guys, this is the gem here. I think this is crucial. Why? Because usually, usually, uh, integrated project and non-integrated project differ by at least uh, 200 PSF. At least. Okay? Based on my research, uh, it's about 200 PSF at least. But this time around, it's actually less than that. So I do believe if you want to look at both projects, and some of this is a huge project, <coughs> The Bukit Timah link is a small project. I think that will make reserve very, very competitive, right? And if you look at the break-even price, they are very similar, 2111 and 2170. So if you are able to buy an integrated project with just a very small difference in PSF, why not, okay? So my personal prediction is that I do believe based on what I can see here, if I stack in another 15 to 20% profit, right? I estimate the selling price to be around 2,400 to 2,600, okay? And why is that so? Because Blossoms actually sold on the average of 2,200, 2,500. So it's just a little bit more. And in fact, I think 200 per square foot is very little. They can actually do more than that, okay? So to me, the premium for paying to get integrated in this case is super worthy. Now let's look at pricing, not just comparing with the new launch like Blossom, but also other projects in the area, right? So over here, I'll give you a very quick glance there are other projects like Verdale, Forret, Dane Tree, View at Kismis, and even Link. Now, take note that Forret and Link are freehold project, okay, and they are launched quite some time ago. So this pricing is what I can get as of the latest transaction. I do believe if right now these two are to go into sub-sale condition, right, this could be higher. So if we look at, let's say, reserve residence, I think the midpoint of 2,500 per square foot, then, wow, is actually very, very close to the freehold pricing. Now, this looks a little bit expensive, right? In my opinion. In this case, it might look a bit expensive because this is not freehold, this is 99 years. But take note, once again, like I said, all these pricing, uh, Verdale, the <coughs> Dane Tree, View at Kismis, were old pricing back in the year 2001. Uh, 2200, uh, 2021, sorry. So if you take all these 1008, 1009, and you add in the time premium that has gone by, right? Reserve residences may be just about maybe 200, maybe 250 per square foot more expensive, right? So I think that actually is still reasonable. So in terms of pricing, I would say, long story short, I think it is okay. If they can launch at around 2004, 2005, right? Maybe 2005, high 2005, I think it's still okay. But if it goes into like 2006, 2007, then I think it's a bit too expensive, right? Now let's compare to the other side. So we're comparing to the west side here, but let's compare to this side, ah. Uh, where it's closer to King Albert Park. There are actually two recent projects, such as Mayfair Garden and Mayfair Modern Day, and these are 99 years. Now, to me, this is a more accurate comparison. Why? Because uh, they are e almost equal in age, just differ by a few years. Plus, you can look at the price here, 2,350, 2,200. So if Reserve were to launch at 2,500, the premium is actually about 150 to 300 per square foot, which I think is reasonable. In fact, if you can get it at 150, PSF difference only, that is a fantastic price, okay? Now, how about any government land sale nearby? Let's take a look. Now, I will say the whole Bukit Dima uh, Beauty World area, whatever plot of land there is, is already fully developed. The only one that is up and coming is actually this place called Grandstand. Now, this is the existing turf city where they are going to redevelop it and all the tenants will have to move out by end of this year. So very likely the GLS for this plot will be issued maybe in 2024 onwards. So I do think that this will help a lot because 
guess what? This is Turf City and where is Visa Residence? Right over here. Okay, so this whole plot of big land, if they were to launch it, and this is very close to 6th Avenue, I think it will have a very positive effect on the future prices of reserve residents when you need to resell. Okay, so having spoken so much, let's quickly summarize what is my score for this project, right? Now, in terms of MRT integratedness, I think it's definitely a, a one star, right? Because it is not just MRT, but also with a bus interchange. On top of that, I think future growth, both this is the latest mall, plus a lot of the upcoming community development just helps the pricing, right? Uh, making sure that there are more and more uh, amenity support for the area. Now, in terms of population center, I'm not afraid for this area because it's a very strong aspect uh, demand as of now. And I think it, with all the future amenities coming up, like the mall, the community center, right? It will really enhance the demand for the area. Now, in terms of nearby GLS plots, I struggled here, but I still decided to give it a one star because with the huge Turf City GLS coming up, I think it will provide a lot of price support. Now, the next point is about whether this is an overlooked project. Unfortunately, this is not a very overlooked project. I think most people have heard about it. You have heard about it in other YouTube channels. So over here, I don't give it a star. Now, in terms of price, like I said, <coughs> I think this is a good project. If you can get a pricing about 2,500 uh, 2, per square foot, I think that is a very low premium compared to the non-integrated project. Okay, so that's my score for reserve residence, 5 out of 6. I think this project is really worth looking at regardless you're an investor or whether you're buying for own state. All right. So once again, remember the show flat viewing starts this weekend on 13th of May. And for those of you who want to get an appointment and even put in the ballot, all right, uh, my agent partners will be able to help you. All you need to do is to put in your particulars in this form and they will contact you very, very shortly. All right. Okay. So guys, what do you think about reserve residence? Do you think this is a project that you want to consider? All right. Many parts of the project that I missed out, all right, do let me know in the comments as well. Okay, so that's all I have for you. I hope you all like the analysis here. If you like such property analysis, do subscribe. Okay? I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.